guys, my name's Ronnie. And I'm Nas. And we are New Girls on the Block. Yeah. So this weekend is going to be a part two from last week's episode, which mm -hmm. is the shift in social media. Yeah. So Because I was getting too juicy. Yes. Yeah. I feel like we had a lot of good points. Yeah. I feel like it was like so much to discuss and so little time, but, and we didn't want to drag it out too long for you guys. We wanted to make it like a part two just so you could get the extra juiciness. Right? Yes. Yeah. So let me bring up the note. Yes, so we're gonna jump right in. We're not gonna waste any time this yeah. week. Yeah, and yes. So, so you want to start with basically we wanted to get into what content is becoming more popular on these social media apps. Do you have some ideas of what you've been seeing more often or lately? I mean, the girls twerking on this planet. Uh, well. <laughs> Well, some girls are tricky. True. I don't think that's ever going to be like unpopular. Also. True. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be watching. I am going to count. But um, I feel like a lot of influencers that I was watching, um, like I for one started YouTube really watching like makeup content. Like oh, yeah. Like influencers. That's where I literally learned how to do makeup. Yeah. Um, I feel like I used to watch a lot of comedy videos like dormitory. Dorm, dormitory, whatever. Yeah. Y'all, if you know, you know. But I used to watch like little skip videos, but I feel like the main content that I was consuming, which is like beauty um, content, is mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of shifting. Oh, the girls yeah. don't really make beauty content anymore. Yeah, so I noticed. I totally noticed the shift in like beauty because I used to like look at them every now and then because I wasn't really too much into like trying to learn makeup because I just felt like I was like hopeless at it. <laughs> so I was just like, I'm not, it's not really my thing. But um, for me, I was looking at more of like hair tutorials, like oh, what yeah. products to use and you stuff like, like that. that like, yeah. yeah. After hair, where y'all at? Yeah, where y'all been at? So the natural hair community kind of like just like, yeah. And I wonder, like I really wonder, is it because they, the shift wasn't getting any views or was it more so like they just didn't want to keep doing that? You know, because like what is the shift? I don't know. That's interesting. I feel like with makeup, I could kind of figure it out. I feel like once COVID hit, people were not going as much places. Yeah. So skincare took over mm -hmm. compared to makeup. But with the whole natural hair community, it was so big and so lucrative. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like people realize because even in the natural hair community, I feel like they were kind of pushing like a certain kind of natural hair. Yeah. I feel like the goal was to get your hair to curl in perfect coils or yeah. have this perfect twist out all the time. Yeah. And I think people started to realize that's not sustainable and you're doing mm -hmm. all of that work when you could probably just like, I feel like braids came back. Yeah. Like people realized like, let me probably just do less. I don't need to be buying all these conditioners, all these milks, these oils, uh -huh. these conditioners, these leave-ins, these creams, this, like, it was like a never-ending quest to get the perfect hair. Girl, and the washing goes, girl, they have me convinced that I could get up. <laughs> I swear I was convinced that I could, oh, wash and go, I'm gonna yeah. get up, wash my hair. <laughs> and go. Yeah, like that on. And I felt like that was like a thing that made people insecure too. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. who is really able just to do a wash and go and then dip and have their hair looking perfect? Cause girl, All I would day. I, yeah, when I tried it, I'm like, this ain't it. And it just made it more like, dang, this is, you know, like it's, it's not, for everybody, it's just for that, like you said, a certain type of yeah. coily, like, it, I don't know. I felt like that was something that was taken over. I mean, time. you, exactly, and we have different hair textures. Yeah. I didn't relate to that, she can relate to that. Yeah. I feel like so many people could not relate to it. It kind of became like disenchanted, like, oh, like, yeah. why am I doing all this stuff? I'm making these people rich. And then it's like these brands, a lot of them, once they like blow up, they like just sell their brands. Yeah. And yeah. like a lot of people were supporting them from the first place because they're like black owned or yeah. women owned and then they blow up. And it's different reasons why they sell their company. Like yeah. you never know what somebody's going through on the back end. And it takes a lot to run a big business True. Yeah, and make it equitable. Uh -huh. So yeah i feel like the natural hair community definitely shifted and a lot of girls who well a few girls i noticed who used to do um 
hair videos, they shifted to do commentary videos mm. on like different things um, surrounding like black women and black oh, communities. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. I've noticed that like mainly on YouTube these days, my like recommendations is commentary videos, like opinions yeah. on like social topics, like pop culture or different things like that. Yeah. And then, um, what else? Um, what I see a lot is the vlogs. lifestyles. Yeah. And, huh, so I love them, mm -hmm. but I just feel like it's so oversaturated with the same style of home, same style, like the basic white, and then I get up, I go to the gym, I make my smoothie, I order groceries, walk my dog. It's just like, I feel like it's a trend and it's just going to be like everybody's trying to achieve that just oh my my luxury apartment all white all like neutral colors i want the uh like what's it called fitness clothes i don't mm -hmm. know it's like no it's difference definitely a certain like image i think about when i think yeah. of lifestyle mm -hmm. and luxury lifestyle and it's interesting because i was just listening to um do you watch Aaliyah's face no it's a she does lifestyle she used to do beauty and yeah. they actually asked her like do you think like all lifestyle content is the same and she made a good point she was like i don't know what people want me to do like she was like should i become vegan next week should i go mm -hmm. invest in a pig farm the following yeah. week she was like i think people are realizing that even though we're very successful people we're youtubers our days are kind of mediocre just like anybody else's yeah like, we don't have anything to do on the everyday we're going to the gym we're doing breakfast we're working a little bit yeah and then hanging out with my friends because that's what i would be doing if i didn't have youtube anyway yeah so i feel like we have gone so far to where it's like we've gone too personal within people's life yeah to where it's just like everything is the same because like yeah these people are not celebrities mm -hmm. like they have talent yes and different some of them will have talent yeah but it's not i feel like if you're watching rihanna's lifestyle of course it would be like different because yeah. she actually is booking shows making a brand like i feel yeah. like I don't watch too many vlogs, but I feel like if somebody had more going on, yeah. they would be more interesting. Well, the thing is, I'm not really, but I don't know. I like them and I like, like, I like lifestyle. I like mm -hmm. seeing the gym and stuff, but I feel like everybody's starting to do the and look type. and they're seeing that these are the ones that's getting views. So they try to be like that. Yeah. And there's like so many people who, and I'm saying like, it, and hey, they'd be like my Amazon faves. Yeah. Right. But I'm just like, it's like, <laughs> Really clear just, house stuff. Yeah, Terrible organization, plan. girl. Uh, the glass straw with their matcha. Yeah, right. and the the uh, coffee machine, espresso machine. Yeah. And, and I just and not not to don anybody's style or whatever, but it's like I'm not seeing any more originality like it used yeah. to be. It seems like everybody's focused and hyper focused on getting views and focused on growing. You know, because that's what. That's what it's about so pays the bills, yeah. The drugs, but it just seems like oversaturated with the same. And literally, like I, I watch so many different girls, even like the tape ins, and yeah, the, the pointed nails, yeah, and like you said, the workout outfits, ponytails, like, yeah. <laughs> and not like I said, if people have that style, it's fine. But I just feel like it's. What I see, I have not seen like a true like wow. This person's like original. Their house is not the same like, yeah. I, and I don't know if that's the algorithm. Like we talk about just feeding me, just because I seen one of them like that. They're feeding me everybody else who has the same type of yeah, apartment, same true. type of lifestyle and or what. But it's just kind of like tiring to see the same. Do you thing think there's a way over. to actually beat the algorithm and actually? Cause I don't think I've really discovered how. Yeah. I feel like I've gotten a little bit better because I really pay attention to the things I like. Yeah. I try not to like too much stuff to like oh. mess up my algorithm. Yeah. Or I'll try even if I like something, I won't like similar stuff because I don't only want to see that. Yeah. But outside of that, do you think there's an actual way to beat the algorithm to where your experience on social media is actually like innovative and you're actually able to? discover because that's what i feel like is missing from a lot of social media yeah. and that's why i love tiktok so much because every time i get on tiktok i find a different type of creator yeah instagram is just like across the board it's just like 
and it seems almost impossible to like make it to where you're actually enjoying the experience yeah i feel like hmm i feel like i, I love tiktok for originality I and mean, you can find like people just experiencing things and like it'll be like a quick like little laugh or something like if it's funny or if somebody's like being their true self and saying something funny like i usually see stuff for like funny or like um like other type of lifestyle like the natural stuff and like plants and stuff that's mm -hmm. kind of like where my tiktok goes but um i feel like with instagram i feel like reels is helping people grow because mm -hmm. they're pushing people to do reels so they could compete with yeah so they could compete with the tiktok so i feel like it is room and ways to grow but you have to kind of be in their guidelines still yeah and conform to what everybody else is doing because it's like literally i feel like the algorithm picks up on what's the most popular so if you do mm -hmm. something similar to something that looked more popular they're gonna push it out because they see that's what gets views yeah. and everything is literally just about money anyway they just true so they want to put out stuff that more people are used to and that's where you keep getting repetitive like content because it's like oh i want to grow my brand so i'm gonna do what she's doing because i see she gets views so i'm gonna do that too and then you just like yeah. another person yeah it's just a, a, a spiral way. so it's like to be fully original and stuff it seems like unless you just have like you get a, punished for almost yeah like it seems like it unless you get lucky and yeah. like go viral somehow some way some you but get it's the, so the, hard to do that the what's it called algorithm jackpot yeah whatever. but mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's a it's i don't know it's just crazy it's hard to figure out what the algorithm really is but mm -hmm. i feel like obviously our what we're seeing being put out is what it they is. want yeah, yeah and so it's either like you get with it or or you, you just, just have a very hard time to grind yeah. it and i also think that's why a lot of like beauty influencers as well stop putting in as much work because yeah. i'm sure it could be very disheartening when people are putting in hours editing yeah. you're going after a way to buy a product try product apply product mm -hmm. and if you're a certain skin tone or if you're plus size or maybe even non-gender conforming it's you would not get pushed and i remember people like jackie Ina, mm -hmm. Aaliyah j like they've been around like these are girls I think of off the top of my head uh -huh. that have been a part of the beauty community since I've been indulging yeah. in it and it took them like years to get to like a million followers uh -huh. or years and like it, it might seem kind of petty like oh my god like it took me so long to get to a million followers but it was people who were putting on like a percentage of the work that they were yeah. putting in that were like blowing up overnight yeah and they would do like oh like very simple clean girl makeup or mm -hmm. like stuff that if only if you are like the standard of beauty you could do very little and yeah. still be considered oh so fresh face yeah. and beautiful mm -hmm. while black women or latinas women of color in general or women who are not like cisgender women yeah. they might not get that opportunity to do it and it's mm -hmm. just like i'm sure after years of putting in work it's like what is the point like i'm really yeah. working hard but you not really rewarded for the yeah. work you do like mm -hmm. i totally agree mm -hmm. and i feel like that's the problem and that's the problem with society in general mm -hmm. is the true uh stereo like not stereotype but like what's the word not it's not fully rape it is racist but it's another word for it i forget mm. i don't know but like shadow banning is i don't think it's equitable for everybody social mm -hmm. media is not an equitable field yeah it's not like we could all have the same level of talent and then it, everything is equal and yeah. we do the same thing mm -hmm. and we're all going to benefit the same way yeah it's like um they need to find a way to cater it to where it doesn't like I don't know I don't know if it's because of the people who are making these algorithm yeah. have internalized bias like that's the word it I think is that's so, the word I was looking for is bias yeah, yeah it is so crazy like not to get too deep yeah. but it is crazy how racism seeps into every system Everyone. that we consume yeah. and like people would like to make you think that oh like people are just overreacting like not no. everything about race 
with these same people who don't even have friend groups that are very diverse yeah. who don't see beauty and diversity rather it be another person's skin tone oh. or their size or just how we were talking about last week because um disabled people are considered easily being able to be bullied mm -hmm. they're automatically put not a part of the algorithm because they don't want people to bully them yeah. but by doing that it gives them less of a shot to actually be successful content creators yeah. like people are not like thinking past their personal bias yeah and it seeps over to how people make a living and mm -hmm. it's not fair it is what it is yeah it's um we should it should not be that way but that's the reality of social media yeah. and i feel like everything always comes down to like changing the system from within yeah. and actually having people that look as diverse as the platform's users in those meetings making those type of decisions i totally agree even like the instagram filters like girl like 90% of these filters, and I know people can make them themselves, but like, and I feel like it's perpetuating a certain look in society that everybody has to look like this or like like big lips, the thin nose, nose, big eyes, all of them make you two shades lighter. Yeah, and that's like, it's like, and people are using them, like black, I see black people using them, I see mm -hmm. like, I use them. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, is putting a distortion on what people really even look mm -hmm. like. So it's like, we are so like- Conditioned. Conditioned to be like, oh, I look cute like this, so I'm gonna put it out. But it's like- But you look cute how you already yeah, are. Yeah, so yeah. It, yeah, it should be more like, let's appreciate the photos without it. And I feel like if everybody starts shifting to that, it'll be like, like yeah. anything, it's a trend. Like, okay, let's all start shifting to not putting on filters, not doing... And even if you have filters, play. like, let's... How about you guys create more of a space for... Why are all the filters that become popular the ones that make you look more European? Yeah. Where I know there's black people creating filters. Yeah, There's exactly. no way there's not black people creating filters. So why are we not getting ones that make you... Your skin tone look maybe more bronzy as yeah. a... Like, but it's still considerate of your undertones and you're not all of a sudden super yellow or super yeah, red or, or like, super pale yeah like, like, like half dead mm -hmm. but um I, it was one that i really liked and i felt they i they can't find it in yeah because i swear it was one that made my skin look so like glowy like summer like summer glow mm -hmm. and i'm just like oh this is one it was my favorite i pinned it but ever since then and it didn't change your nose Mm -hmm. It did a little like you could do a lip enhancer or mm -hmm. not, but you could adjust it. And I feel like those ones, if the ones where that the options of you could adjust it, it yeah. Like and that one was like top tier, top tier. But of course they deleted it. Oh, I'm just looking at the camera. Back. Sorry. <laughs> no <laughs> but worries. yeah, um, of course they deleted it, and now it's like just I don't know. I swear every filter I look look for is not anything that I look at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like Instagram algorithms, YouTube yeah. algorithms, all of that stuff is like. I feel like they need to like people. be easy on the algorithms. Yeah. They need to let people like have more room to actually create. Like, I know this is a business, yeah. but there is room for people to create, and I think that can actually increase the business just like TikTok. I feel like social media, like in order for Instagram to stay relevant, it's gonna have to like lessen the borders. Yeah. It even gives me anxiety posting sometimes. Yeah. Just like, okay, is this the right look? Is this the right angle? Is this is the, the right, right time? Because even that matters. Like, they won't push your stuff out. I literally time. posted today on Sunday. I was like, damn. After I posted, I was like, I should have just posted this on Monday. Yeah. But why can't I post when I want to post and still get the benefit? But it's like, you can't live for the wise like yeah so. exactly i feel um i even was like looking at youtube videos mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like pissed off youtube is kind of like good yeah and a lot of people are getting pissed off because they're taking more money they're putting so much ads in it and a lot of people are moving to patreon so yeah. i was like i don't really know too much about patreon but i know that that's like a better option for creators to really mm -hmm. get their appreciation and the like fan base that they know they deserve and want 
but I just feel like I don't know like do you think how do you feel about uh I like Patreon I've used Patreon in the past oh, I yeah? subscribe to people on Patreon because Sometimes I feel like people be offering such good stuff, like yeah. whether it be a podcast, like I'd be interested, like I'm yeah. going to listen generally. And I'd be like, hmm, if I could give somebody $7 or $5, some people pay trend as a dollar a month. Yeah. It's like if I can give Netflix or this big corporation my money, why can I give an individual content creator who's putting so much work into getting things done? Yeah. I'm very much about like, I have friends, even if somebody had be like, can I do something for free? I'll be like, let me try to, like, I'll give you half of it. Like, yeah. you, like I'll be really trying to support small and local businesses. Yeah. So, or not even local, just like smaller content creators. Mm -hmm. Cause like, fuck the man. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day. So yeah, I like Patreon. Yeah, I, like I haven't um, gotten on. I've seen a lot of like the creators that I like do it, but I mm -hmm. haven't really, expanded my research on mm -hmm. patreon but i see a lot of youtubers are switching to that and like telling their stories about how like even the biggest ones like and it's not i think it's not as um saturated or like not saturated but what is it how you can't say certain words on youtube oh restricted like yeah it's not restrictive as yeah YouTube. Hmm, that might be another uh -huh. thing we might get into mm -hmm. but yeah i feel like um the switch to that is probably like more of a benefit. I want to do more research on Patreon just so we could see like our options as well. But do you think that Patreon is going to? Yes, I think Patreon is going to only go up. I yeah. honestly think paid platforms, like I think I said it last week, but paid platforms are the way to go yeah. because content creators are putting so much effort into what they're doing, putting time, effort, there's sweat and tears into it. Yeah. People want to get paid for what they're worth. And some people are putting out stuff that could be like TV shows. Yeah, literally. Like, I, I totally agree. But do you think, because YouTube, we get it for free. So yeah. do you think that the fan base of those people can... Yeah, do you think the whole shift will be completely... No, I think there's always... The thing is, you want to make it so that all your friends have as many fans as possible can access your work yeah and i feel like there's tiers to it you can have a certain type of content that's free and available on youtube and maybe you post less on youtube or mm -hmm. post less on instagram but you give like a little bit more like yeah. i think it's just creating value in your work yeah and maybe not a hundred percent of your fan base will come by but maybe like 30 percent yeah and that would be a good chunk and that's better than not getting paid anything for it, yeah, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. And the way YouTube makes it to where you have to hit these super duper high numbers, yeah. even to be monetized, $80 in a month, or Girl. like, there could be people who are really connecting with your work and you're getting paid directly. Yeah. And you might end up, if only 10 people subscribe um, at $10 a month, that might be a hundred dollars yeah. and you want to have even got that from youtube in a month true exactly so, I, yeah I, I never looked in the balance of like how much you could mm -hmm. send it to or like because i was just thinking like in my head and you said like somebody sent it to a dollar but i'm like if you have a hundred k subscribers and it's a dollar mm -hmm. then that's making you definitely definitely making you a living mm -hmm. so it's like and then you can have tears. Maybe yeah. somebody can only afford a dollar a month yeah. so they get this kind of content. Mm -hmm. And then you're making a certain amount of content. You have a little extra more and yeah. they can pay five dollars. Mm -hmm. I feel like the average price I see is between five and seven dollars. Yeah. I feel like seven dollars is really the average price I see. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure some people go up to twenty dollars. It just depends on what you're offering yeah and i think it, a lot of strategy goes into that because you want to make your platform like actually sustainable yeah. especially when you're having people pay for it you have to have value in it mm -hmm. so yeah i totally agree i wonder how that goes for like new creators or like smaller creators i i haven't looked into like somebody like just started on patreon mm -hmm. and was like oh this is what I'm i feel like with. it would be hard to solely grow through patreon yeah because i don't see as much advertisement direct um customer advertisement yeah. i feel like the advertisement 
for Patreon is more towards the creator, if mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. So the general public, I feel like, should still be able to access your content in a free yeah. landscape. Because you want to get people in the door. You know? uh -huh. Before, like, if I want to pay for your stuff on Patreon, how would I even know the how much value stuff. or quality it has yeah. if I have to pay for it first? That's True. when you get into OnlyFans. Yeah, and, you know, uh -huh. and that's a big thing too. But even there's been a shift, even with that, and uh -huh. people are more picky about how they spend their money. Yeah, so, so that's what I was uh, like, just pondering is like, how do people? Because I know people are supportive on there, but mm -hmm. how do people actually like, like engage with Patreon? Like, is it do the fans like it? Because I, I feel like I should do more research. I think mm -hmm. I am going to do more research on that, but, um, yeah, like, what's the, like, fan base? Like, what do they think about a creator shift into Patreon or, like... I think if you feel like the content is worth it, like, yeah. I think so, like, um, it's a podcast, all this too, it's a conspiracy podcast, Yeah. and they drop every Monday, but they do, like, really, they do, like, two or three podcasts in a week, um, but only one is available on Spotify. Oh, uh, yeah. And you could get the rest um, ad free, mm -hmm. no censor on Patreon. Mm, and sometimes yeah. I'd be really wanting to know, like, what else is this person True. thinking? So I'd be like, and it's seven dollars. I'm like, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And then they have a whole backlog. Like this particular person, they've been making content since like 2002, oh, but wow. they've been shadow banned on different things. Yeah. So they were able to put all their content that's censored mm -hmm. on other platforms such yeah. as youtube and stuff and put it on the patreon and you have access to all this information yeah so well, that makes sense it's valuable it it's that to me that's a valuable thing to have yeah so just able to go back and listen to years worth of content mm. and yeah okay and especially yeah. when it's like something that's teaching you something i like it too yeah i agree i feel like that's like my favorite content is like you can learn more from it but i feel like yeah that might be the shift because i'm like youtube is starting to really become more of just too like literally everything has like nearly ten five ads. yeah ten yeah. ads like and i know the content creator's not getting paid from all that and yeah it's like, okay. even a girl when the video ends they put an ad out who's mm -hmm. getting paid for that the video's already over it's not going to because it will stop It'll be an ad, and then it'll be like, do you want to watch this video? Like, yeah, like what? It's crazy. So I feel like it has to be kind of like a shift, and I feel like the shift is going to probably be Patreon for YouTube and the shift. Yeah, or even like things like Twitch streaming things where yeah. you're able to like interact. I think the time of over curated content is done. Yes. Like you don't want like I'm tired of seeing the same cookie color polished image yeah. on Instagram. Like I want okay. to be able to see somebody in their natural habitat. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to like I think the world in general is shifting. Like yeah. even from like like that could be a topic for another week. Like the <laughs> BBL body, the perfect oh, yeah. we were image. Talking about that yeah, bit. in your mind. I feel like people are, are like like if they're tired of it, what's yeah. the one where you take it? Like it'll send you a notification. Be real. Do you know Be real? Mm -mm. real is a social media app where it's like in the middle of the day, like different times of day, it'll like notify you, and you have to like take a picture in the oh, moment. Oh yeah. And it's called Be Real because mm -hmm. you're actually capturing like people. You follow different people, mm -hmm. so I'll be, you could be like doing homework or doing yeah. work here or we'll take my film in the podcast like people actually see the you. real time yeah the real you mm -hmm. you don't have time to edit your pictures you don't yeah. have time like you could skip it i think okay but you can't like be oversaturated yeah and i, I think that's healthier that, for you too i i think that is but i'm like from i'm just thinking of a safety perspective mm -hmm. like if you're like Taking pictures, like, let's say if you're at a restaurant or something and you have like a big following, oh, at the moment, but you can skip. True, but I'm like, some people wouldn't, you know, and it's like, they would have just like, I don't know, I mean, like, super, like, oh, yeah. safety, but like, 
Because people could be crazy. And it's like, dang, she's here right now? Or he's yeah. here right now? But like, I think oh. it's based on your followers, too. Mm. Like, I'm sure you can make it. I haven't used the app, but I'm sure yeah. you can make it private. Yeah. Or, like, only the people that you follow can see, like, uh -huh. your activity. or the Yeah, people. that would be better for, like, but bigger. I'm not sure. We could do some research, some market yeah. research on the new social media. I don't even know. Yeah, because I'm not mm. even familiar with a lot of the newer stuff that's coming out. But... I feel like there's so many and so many ways to tap into new content creation mm -hmm. and new ways to get yourself out there. So, so I think we may have uh, figured out how to beat the algorithm. We did. Just get enough of. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta ditch the old. Yeah. Go to the new. Yeah. Instagram I, is just really business based yeah, to me now. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like it's just like, oh, you sell on a product, go on Instagram. You want to build up your brand, go on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like it's like. Really, that's just fine. Like, yeah. That's what that's for. And I, and literally for me, most of the people, most of the new people I follow too, are local businesses. Mm -hmm. Like I like I like to see what's going on at like, like literally the coffee shop up the street. I follow them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. it's different businesses or different food places. I'll follow them on Instagram. And that's who I, that's who I gravitate towards to follow. Mm -hmm. I'm not really like looking on Instagram for influencers or like. People yeah, I'm trying to influencers. Yeah. I don't want to be influenced anymore. Yeah. I want to take my influence back. Like, yeah, I agree. Give me back my time. I like yeah. to use Instagram to connect with local LA like um, people in LA. I meet people yeah. who are getting businesses started, other creative, mm -hmm. small businesses, stuff based around business yeah. and networking. As well. Yeah, exactly. So. so it's a shift, y'all. Yeah. But what do y'all think? Yeah. Like, um, do y'all think the next move would be towards less curated um, content? Yeah. Do y'all feel like y'all would be willing to pay for content that y'all really love? Yeah. If it's actually quality? Mm -hmm. Like, what y'all feeling? Yeah, let like, us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. and just let us know, like, what's your favorite right now? What do you feel like is the best yes, social media yeah. app? Mm -hmm. For real. If you, and if y'all experienced, what is it? Be real? Be real. Be yes. Real. And nice. we will be experimenting with some things coming up in the yeah. near future. Totally. You yes. want to keep it a secret? Yes. We're going to keep it a secret for okay, this week. Okay, okay, but okay. if y'all ready for the next phase of new girls, we give y'all yeah. more content uh -huh. than ever. I'm excited. I am too. But oh, we're we going to test it out. Yeah, we're going to test it out first. We're still in the testing phase. Yeah. So we're testing it out. We will be announcing it definitely this month. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so make sure you guys are streaming. Yes. Make sure you guys are sharing. Yeah. Make sure you guys are listening to last week's episode mm -hmm. on uh, both Spotify and YouTube. Yes. And really anywhere you stream podcasts. True, Apple Podcasts, yeah. all the other ones. We um, on there too. What else is there? Title. Anywhere you can stream a podcast, you can find us. Yes. And there will be more ways to find yes. us coming up soon. So, yes. Thank y'all mm -hmm. for spending some time with us. Yeah. It's been real. Yeah. And that's all we got for y'all this week. So, yes. bye. bye.